So the, the fossils here at Charmouth and at Lyme Regis um, are about 190 million years old. And back then, in the early Jurassic, the world looked very different. We had the supercontinent of Pangaea um, that was starting to break up and seas were forming around as well. And actually here at Charmouth, even though when you hear that word Jurassic, you might think dinosaurs, Jurassic films, all of that kind of thing. Um, we actually had a shallow tropical sea. Um, the whole of, or most of the UK was underwater, which means that we looked a bit like the Caribbean. We were much closer to the equator back then. And actually behind me here, you can see um, what the environment would have looked like. And the Jurassic seas were absolutely teeming with life. We had all sorts of creatures from the small shells, like the devil's toenail and the other bivalves on the bottom of the sea floor, to things like ammonites, the lovely spiraled famous fossils that we get here. We also had things like belemnites, the Jurassic squids. Um, we had star-shaped sea lilies dangling down from driftwood. We had dipediums, the fossil fish. Uh, we had different types of sharks. We had plesiosaurs, which were marine reptiles with a sort of barreled body and long necks um, like, a, like a snake. We also, our top marine reptile predator of the Jurassic Seas, the ichthyosaur, um, which is very famous in this area. Um, the first one to be found was found by Mary Anning back in early Victorian times. In 1811, that was where Mary Anning found her first ichthyosaur. And we do still find ichthyosaurs today, but they, when they were alive, they were one of the top predators. They would have pretty much eaten everything in their path. Uh, I mean, they were so carnivorous that they were even eating each other. There's records of ichthyosaurs with smaller ones in their bellies where they've eaten them, or even we get fossil poo, coprolite, uh, which has bits of bones from other ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs in there so we know they eat each other. Um, we actually have evidence of fights between ichthyosaurs as well. This particular one behind me, the, the Attenborough sea dragon found by Chris Moore, the local fossil collector. This one met a bit of a sticky end and you'll have to come here and find out what happened to it. Um, or you can watch the BBC documentary Attenborough and the Sea Dragon as well. And we've got the real fossil here on display um, and it's a fantastic ichthyosaur. It's a really, really big one, um, potentially a brand new species as well. Now, another thing that we're going to go and have a look, come this way. Now, one of the first things you're going to come to if you visit the Heritage Centre here at Charmouth. So one of the first cabinets you'll come to if you visit the Charmouth Heritage Centre is this one here. And this is our recent finds cabinet and so named because it is packed full of fossils that have been found within the last few years right here on the Jurassic Coast. Our section here from Eep and Seatown in the east over to Lyme Regis in the west. Um, everything here is really, really recently found. It's incredible stuff. We have a whole range of all sorts of collectors that have found it and kindly loaned these fossils to us to have on display. We've got plesiosaur marine reptile bones found by a local professional collector. We have got Jurassic seeds found by our senior warden. We've got ammonites found by one of our lovely volunteers, Heather. We have got ammonites bigger than a dinner plate in here as well. We've got ammonites found by one of our lovely volunteers, Heather. And we have also got some incredible finds from you guys. So families, kids, adults here on holiday, or maybe just down for a day trip, and they've stumbled upon something incredible. We've got a fossil fish found by a six-year-old girl and a mammoth tooth found by an eight-year-old boy right here in the cabinet. They very kindly let us have them on display. And the things in here are always changing as well. So every time you come in, there'll be something new, something different, something that's been found recently on this coastline. It's absolutely incredible. Ooh. 
So right behind me here, guys, we have got the Charmouth dinosaur. And the Charmouth dinosaur is called Scalidosaur, or Scalidosaurus. And the Scalidosaur was a herbivore, so it ate small plants and shrubs um, in the Jurassic Forest on these small islands dotted around um, what would have been um, a lovely tropical ocean in the Jurassic Seas, where the whole of the UK is now. And the Scalidosaur, you'll be able to see closer up if you come and visit us. So the Scalidosaur was an armoured dinosaur. So he had a row of bony armoured plates going all the way across the back and to the end of the tail. And this would have given them a lot of protection against bigger predators like the Megalosaur. And it's particularly armoured around the neck, which we reckon is probably because that would have been a, a very vulnerable area. They would have wanted to keep that nice and protected. So what's extra special about the Scalidosaur is that it has also got fossilised vomit in its throat. And you may or may not know, but creatures, when they die and they drown, instinctively, they are sick. So this gives us a clue as to how this creature died. Perhaps it got caught in a flash flood and drowned in the river, vomited, washed out to sea, and then sunk down into the sea and fossilised amongst all our other marine creatures in the Jurassic for us to find here at Charmouth. This specimen here is one of only eight Scalidosaur fossils in the whole world. They have all been found here at Charmouth, hence why it's called the Charmouth dinosaur. And it is the most complete fossil dinosaur that we have here in Britain. Now I'm going to take you to see another part of the centre now. So here is one of my favourite display cases that we have here at the Heritage Centre. It's our fossil beach. It's a mock-up of what the beach might look like, filled with gravel, but also got all the different fossils that you might find out on the beach. So we've got the spiralled ammonites, the bullet-shaped bellumnites, the star-shaped crinoid, bits of bone, bits of fossil wood, fossil shells, all sorts in here. And this will really, really help you if you're planning to go out fossil hunting come here, have a good look, use this as a bit of a practice um, before you go out hunting. So a lot of people when they come here they ask us what are the best tools for fossil hunting and I know what you guys are all thinking, hammers, chisels, maybe a spade or two and those are great tools but, but your best tools are actually a good pair of eyes and hands that don't mind getting grubby because most of the fossils, 95% of the fossils here are loose in amongst the fine gravel and pebbles so you just want to rummage through them with your fingers and spot those fossils. It's really really nice and easy, safe and fun to fossil hunt particularly if you've got kids with you here at Charmouth so get out there and start fossil hunting. But if you want some extra tips, we can show you examples of what to look for up here. And we can also point you in the right direction of the best spots on the beach to be going. And we can also advise you on the best times of day to be going fossil hunting. Because there are only certain times here at Charmouth and Lyme Regis that you can fossil hunt with the safe low tide. Now, the one thing to be aware of, if you're planning to get yourself a hammer, we do sell them here in the shop. Now, there are some fossils that you might need a hammer for, or might want to use a hammer for, and those are going to be your calcite crystal ammonites. And what you're looking for with them is a nice, hard, flat, grey limestone pebble, just like this one here. And if you give it a tap, you might be lucky and get yourself an ammonite inside it. These ammonites are stunning. They preserve with that calcite crystal inside the shell. Now, if you are going to be doing some hammering, there's a few things that you should know. So you want to make sure you've got a nice geological hammer and safety goggles to protect your, your eyes. And we also ask that you don't hammer in the cliffs or the rock ledges that jut out to sea. Because we're a world heritage site here at the Jurassic Coast, you're not actually allowed to hammer into the cliffs or the rock ledges because those bits are protected. We want to keep them safe. But the good news is that absolutely anything that is loose on that beach is yours for the taking. We actually say you're rescuing those fossils because if you left them on the beach, they would just get destroyed by the sea. So go out there and rescue as many fossils as you can. 
And if you do want to get yourself a fossil hunting kit with a hammer, goggles, and a lovely fossil ID card specific for here in Charmouth, then pop in and see us, and we sell them in our gift shop. But once you've found loads of fossils on the beach, come back in and show us. All the wardens, we're happy to, to identify fossils and share in that excitement with you. Let me just pop our fossil back. So I'm now here in our education room and us as a charity, the Charmouth Heritage Co Centre, education is at the forefront of what we do, but we believe that it shouldn't be boring. It should be exciting and enthusing and make you want to actually learn more and find out about the ancient environment that was here 200 million years ago. So we want you to go out there and fossil hunt and learn for yourself. We don't just do that with with public groups or people that visit the centre. We also take loads of school groups out as well um, and we love to do that. If you'd love to get involved, then let us know. Drop us an email. We'd love to have you as part of our volunteer force, going out on walks or here in the centre, or even as a member, as a friend, where you have regular updates, newsletters, events, lectures, all sorts of things to keep our charity going and support the work that we do. There's even more fossils to be found in our education room. We've got ammonites, massive ammonites on the wall. We've got ichthyosaur skulls above our heads. We've got plesiosaurs above our heads built by kids in the summer. We've got an entire new marine display over here. Have a little look over here at our fish tank. We've got a catch and release um, tank here full of lots of different rock pool creatures that you can find. Lime Bay is an incredible place. It's actually a marine reserve um, and that is because there are some incredible rare species like the pink sea fans here um, and because of the reserve those things are protected and flourishing once more. Down here we have got some absolutely stunning footage from out in Lime Bay um, showing all the different creatures that are out there. It's incredible. Yeah, even It reminds me of a lovely tropical sea. It's beautiful. It's incredible how much life is teeming in our local oceans. We've got a, a cat shark swimming around right now. We've had, um, there's been Dover Sole swimming across. We've got this fantastic new marine display over here. We've got a catch and release fish tank, which is incredible. We get local rock pool creatures in there and we get some kind donations from the Lime Regis Aquarium as well. Do say hello to our lovely friendly fish in there. Um, but we've also got this whole display talking about the plastic pollution, the dreadful plastic pollution and other um, waste that gets washed into our oceans every single day and various things that you can do, easy things to reduce that plastic and we encourage you to go out there and do a beach clean and collect some rubbish. This dolphin that's on the wall, everything that is on there has been found on the beach as rubbish. There's plastic, there's glass, there's rubber gloves, there's fishing wire, there's all sorts out there. Um, but we can create some beautiful artwork out of it as well. So we're here in our education room and this is another fantastic load of fossils in here. We have got a gorgeous slab of ammonites on the back wall here. That was found by Chris Moore on a beach called Monmouth Beach over in Lyme Regis. There's a skull of an ichthyosaur above my head and above your heads, look straight above, you can see a plesiosaur, a model of a plesiosaur right up there, which is actually built by local artist Daryl Wakelam and the kids in the local area. That's incredible, I love that. We've got other stuff above our heads as well. We've got um, jellyfish, we've got stuff that's been washed up. And Percy the plesiosaur, just over here, which one of our volunteers actually made during lockdown. So we've got incredible stuff for you to see here at the Charmouth Heritage Co-Centre and we cannot wait for you to come and visit us. <laughs>